Welcome back to another episode of the Science of Dragon Ball. In today's segment, we're going to be breaking down Cell's regeneration and how it's completely different from all the other ones throughout all of Dragon Ball. Now before we dive into today's edition of the Science of Dragon Ball, I wanted to invite you to check out the complete library of all the other episodes in this series. The link above and below will take you to the playlist called, well you guessed it, The Science of Dragon Ball, where you can find every video from this highly regarded series. And be sure to subscribe and don't forget to turn on post notifications. You can also follow them on social media, and the more of you that subscribe, the closer I become to perfection. During the serialization of the Android arc, Akira Toriyama often changed the direction of the story due to the pressure from his former editor and the demands of his current one. According to the Daizenshi 2, his former editor advised Toriyama to change the main villains from Androids 19 and 20 to someone else so then we have him creating androids 17 and 18 and he gets another call from his editor who now says that these new villains are just brats this causes toriyama to create the villain that we all know today as cell cell's transformations were once again suggested by his editor with his first form being ugly and his second making him look like a complete moron however cell's in-universe concept has a far more serious meaning behind it than his out-of-universe conception. On February 18th, 1992, Dragon Ball Chapter 361 was finally released, giving the world a first look into the new villain of Dragon Ball, Cell. Cell would first reveal himself to Piccolo and refers to him as his brother. Now the two would be fighting for a bit with Piccolo having a clear advantage, but Cell was able to get behind Piccolo and begin absorbing energy from his arm. Interestingly enough, this will be a topic that I'm planning on covering in the future as well. But Cell was able to drain Ki from any organic life by puncturing them with his tail. So he was able to puncture Piccolo's arm and began draining Ki from it. But Piccolo was able to break free by headbutting Cell. Instead of continuing the fight, Piccolo tricks Cell into telling him everything about his origins as his quote-unquote dying wish. Cell would go on to explain that he was created by Dr. Jiro's computer. He's made up of samples of cells from some of the strongest fighters in the world, including Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Frieza, King Cole, and many others. But he'd also need to absorb Androids 17 and 18 in order to achieve his perfected form. Then as Piccolo finds out about everything that he needed to know, he rips out his arm and is able to regenerate it. Cell is shocked as Piccolo was able to trick him into all of this talking, yet he was able to retreat when Trunks and Krillin arrived, as he was outnumbered and outpowered. Considering that Cell also has a mind that's made up of the cells from some of the smartest martial artists in the universe, it was dumb of him to forget that Piccolo can regenerate limbs. Of course, this wasn't the last time that regeneration would play a big part in this arc. Now, as we all know, Cell would succeed in absorbing Android 17 and 18, which allows him to achieve his perfect form. While in his perfect form, Cell shows his ability in regenerating multiple times. Initially, when Vegeta unleashes... Final Flash! <laughs> Final Flash, which completely blew off Cell's arm. At first, Cell pretends to be hurt and defeated, as he just wanted to make Vegeta look like a fool. Cell would be able to completely regenerate his arm back and quickly dispatches of Vegeta. Not long after, Cell and Goku would clash, and Goku would combine his Kamehameha with his instantaneous movement technique. To not only blow up Cell's entire upper half off, but create an iconic moment beloved by so many fans. Yet, when Cell gets back up from regenerating... I should have known that you'd be able to regenerate yourself. Of course, thanks to Piccolo's Cell. So far, this actually hasn't retconned anything, because we've never seen the limits of the Namekian regeneration. 
we would only see limbs being regrown up until this point, with the only exception being the questionable regeneration of the hole in Piccolo's stomach after his defeat to Imperfect Cell. It's unclear whether Piccolo regenerated from his own technique or if it was a sensu beam. And the manga doesn't make it any easier for us as it just illustrates a hole in his back with lines in it. And this is where the cells of that other fighter in Cell's gene pool come into play. He would also contain the cells of Frieza, who's able to survive under the most extreme conditions, like space. Somehow, Frieza has actually been able to survive with his entire lower torso and arm cut off, then proceeded to get blasted by Goku, which led him to lose half of his head and a decent amount of the rest of his upper torso. But surprisingly enough, Frieza isn't the only species who's able to withstand these conditions. There is one, and it exists in our world. Now later on, after Cell self-destructs, he would instant transmission back to Earth, and explains his perseverance state. Near the core of my being still existed. One living cell survived, and that is all I needed for my regeneration. Soon that single living cell began to multiply into many. It wasn't long before I became conscious of my transformation. I could feel every part of my body growing, crackling with new life and energy. My shapeless mass began to sprout new limbs. That is when I realized that each of my cells must hold a memory of my former self. Each one programmed to make me whole again. Now this would lead to many people screaming, plot hole, plot hole. But instead, let's take a scientific look into this and see what Cell really was supposed to mean and how he actually may have been wrong in explaining it. So what if I told you there are several different types of species whose heads can be decapitated, but in the span of a short amount of time, the heads will begin to grow again from that animal. And these species are from our world, so they are real. They're called planarians and they're a type of flatworm. They have this amazing ability to regenerate lost body parts. The species has been used in research in order to understand the fundamental rules of this process. Since our lives depend on the ability of our tissues like our skin, intestines, or blood to regenerate. But unlike planarians and perfect cell, we can't regenerate a new head or half of our body just like that. But we know that cell is able to do it thanks to piccolo cells. Now whether it's planaria, humans, saiyans, or all of the animals on Noah's boat, they would eventually need to make new tissues at some point in their lives, like during development, or to heal a wound. So what is this key that the worms have in their regeneration? Now inside of them, they house a large number of adult stem cells, quite similar to human embryos, since it's crucial during developmental periods to produce different types of differentiating cells, such as skin, brain, muscles, or the liver cells. Yet as we age, our stem cells become more and more rare. Then again, planaria have an abundant amount throughout their entire life, totaling at about one-fifth of their entire cell amount. The beauty inside cells is the molecular signals are transmitted like dominoes, where the action of one molecule affects the function of the next, ultimately steering the stem cells into rebuilding the missing body part. Simply put, to explain how the worms are able to do it, the protein beta cannonin is responsible for head regrowth, while the protein APC accounts for the tail. There are several other types of animals that we know which behave this way. We still have an unanswered aspect of perfect cells regeneration. Since it is much more extreme than the inherited Namekian section, being able to revive his entire body from just a cluster of cells is no ordinary feat, and one that's still above all of the others that we have mentioned today. This characteristic can only be a result of Frieza's genetic information, which allowed him to be able to survive in the vacuum of space, without any air, and literally in pieces. And yet, despite this incredible feat, there is but only one species in our world that can survive the vacuum of space, the water bear. Well, scientifically, they're actually called tardigrades. And these amazing micro-animals have feats that would blow even the ones from Dragon Ball out of the water. 
so there is no plot hole or retcon. Cell's regeneration is just a buffed up version of Piccolo's, thanks to Frieza's genetic information. Now I hope this video answered all of your questions on Cell's regeneration, and if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and leave a comment. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.